I'm 12 years old, dreaming of becoming a doctor one day. I watch my older brother, he's studying physics with a tutor. I'm 14 now, the same age that my brother was when he was studying with a tutor to get the grades that he needed to get into medical school. So I go to my parents, I'm excited. I say, it's my turn, I wanna get that extra help and get ready for medical school as well. I'm told I cannot because the tutor is male and there's no way that would be appropriate for a young girl. I'm 16 now, dreaming of becoming a doctor? Not anymore. Married? Yes. To a man I've never met? Yes. No, I'm not married and that's not my story, but it is of my aunt and my grandmother. To be told you cannot study physics like your brothers do because the tutor is male, to be shunned for weight gain that wouldn't make you fit for marriage, to be a disappointment to not know how to cook and clean, to be afraid of walking on the streets without a male companion, to be told that your dreams are too big to balance with parenting. These are just snippets of the stories of women like my aunt and grandmother who grew up in Pakistan and other countries. So my parents immigrating to Canada before I was born may be my greatest privilege. I've grown up with a level of freedom that my aunt, grandmother, and women before her never had the opportunity to experience. I often hear about the dreams that my aunt and grandmother still in Pakistan had and weren't able to pursue, like achieving a fulfilling career or moving abroad. And here I am, first Canadian born in my family. The sacrifices made by all the people before me, there is a reason that I'm here today. I still remember coming home after a long day at school and going to my parents and saying, I'm so done, I'm just going to marry Rich and call it a day, it's really not worth it. <laughs> Where other dads would probably be happy at the thought of their daughter marrying someone well off and preparing for marriage, my dad turned around and he said, Kalia, you can marry Rich. But before that, you should be financially independent. Women and men should not depend on anyone else. And his response reminded me why I was working so hard. It reminded me why I could not give up. Because my dad left everything that he knew and moved here so that my siblings and I could have a better future. He saw everything that women didn't have there and he came here so that my sister and I would have a brighter future. Now let me tell you the story of my mother, a medical doctor. I'll paint a picture of a day in the life of my mom when I was a kid. It's 6 a.m., my mom is up bright and early to make us breakfast before she has to head to work from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. She goes to work, she spends her entire day at work standing in a clinic, minimum wage, and then at 3 p.m., she's done just in time to pick us up from school. She shows up with a bright smile on her face in her silver Dodge minivan, picks us up from school, and once we're home, within half an hour, I can already smell the delicious aroma of the meal that she's cooking for us. Been up since 6 a.m., working all day, picking us up from school, and she still had the energy to cook for us again. She would spend the rest of the evening alternating between studying her own books to get accredited as a doctor in Canada and helping my siblings and I study for our own subjects. Oh wait, didn't I say she was a medical doctor? She was, back in Pakistan. My mom, the first woman in her family to be professionally educated, spent years studying in Pakistan to become a doctor, only to then move far away from her family, sacrifice her career and everything that she knew to come to a foreign country so that my siblings and I could have a better future. She sacrificed absolutely everything for us. But what did I do to be bestowed with so much privilege? To be able to speak in English and not worry about judgment for my accent? To be able to walk around the streets and not fear my safety? To be able to do things that women before me could only dream about. I care about the women who have preceded me and about those that will succeed me. I want to give back to the countless generations who have given me so much, to the communities that have surrounded me with support, and to the people who struggle to find the support that I got lucky to have. I am overwhelmed by this burden to make up for centuries of lost opportunities for women. And this has led to this expectation that I need to be perfect. 
And it's this expectation of perfectionism that I continue to battle every day. I've internalized these expectations to do more, to be the best in every faucet of life, to be the perfect daughter, to be the perfect student, to be the perfect leader. Things did not change for me until I joined the debate team in seventh grade. Debate is where I found my voice. I gained this level of self-awareness and self-confidence that I never thought I could have. I discovered that there's a whole world of opportunity out there. Before debate, I was thinking medicine or engineering. I was told doctor or engineer, and that was the path that I was on. Because that's all I knew, and I wanted to become a doctor because that's all my parents knew. My parents left the highest amounts of doubt and instability and came here. And the last thing that they wanted was for us to experience that same struggle. So I was on that path of medicine until I joined debate, where I gained this level of self-awareness and self-confidence, and I discovered the rest of the opportunities out there. But the interesting thing is that I thought being born in Canada with these astounding privileges was supposed to shelter me from the obstacles that so many women face in Pakistan and other countries. Yet as I progressed through debate, I realized that the higher I went in competition, from regionals to provincials to nationals, the fewer and fewer women I would see at these events. I still remember standing in a circle of male debaters, watching everyone extend their hand to greet my male debate partner and completely ignoring my presence. It was in that moment that I realized that I was going to have to extend my hand. I was going to have to put in that extra effort because the debate circuit was male dominated and that would follow me for years to come. Debate gave me the confidence to stretch my comfort zone. It gave me the conviction to start my first business. So at 13, I called up the registry agency, excited to start my first company. And when the man on the phone asked for my year of birth, and I said 2001, he broke into laughter. When he broke into laughter, it made me realize that we rarely see young women leading. In fact, in healthcare, despite the fact that we see 40% of all physicians and surgeons are women, only 16% are permanent medical school deans. In law, even though 45% are associates, only 19% are actually equity partners. And in financial services, 53% are financial managers. But among Fortune 500 CEOs, only 12.5% of them are women. But if I followed expectations and I waited until I was older, I would never have discovered my love for business. If I stepped out of the debate circuit because it was too male dominated, I would never have found my voice and discovered my passion for public speaking. Back in debate, I had enough. I had finally find my, found my voice and I finally felt like I had a space where I could speak up. But for years I had internalized this belief that I just wasn't good enough as my male counterparts and that's why I was being ignored. Only to then, hear from countless other young women, youth, and other underrepresented people experiencing the same, despite being incredibly talented. I realized that I was not following what was expected of me by society, and for that, I was being shunned. The same place where I had found my voice had become the place where I had felt least heard. And this wasn't what my parents had instilled in me. They had instilled in me and my sister the feeling that we would fill our spaces. And this realization is what led me to starting my company, Talk Maze, to empower young people to find their voice, to empower young women to find their voice and to become confident community leaders in whatever industry that they choose. I realized that being in this box of expectations was not going to allow me to build the life that I truly want. And now, at 20, I'm building a company that I'm proud of, I'm pursuing a degree in my field of interest, and I'm taking risks to chase my dreams. I don't know what my future holds, but for once, I'm okay with that. Because what I do know is that I am following my passions, and I'm allowing myself to fail to meet the expectations of what a woman is supposed to be like, of what I need to achieve as an immigrant's daughter, and of where I belong in society. 
I've been able to reach thousands of youth through my work in leadership, governance, and business. But if I followed expectations and forced myself into that box of expectations from society, from family, and even from myself, that would not have been possible. I grew up believing that stability was my only pathway to success. Debate forced me to stretch my comfort zone and realize that the places of growth lie in uncertainty and discomfort. I realized that I had to step out of that zone in order to grow. I thought when I was younger that medicine or engineering were the paths for me, but debate and entrepreneurship helped me realize that I wanted to go a different direction. I want to experience and live my life to the fullest on my own terms. Because now I know that the sacrifices my parents and generations before them made were not so that I could be perfect, but so that I could have the opportunity to experience life to its fullest extent in ways that they could not even imagine. My dad defied expectations by raising his daughters to be career-oriented and by being the only person of color at his level of work. My mom defied expectations by being the first female in her family to be professionally educated and by not giving up despite the struggles she faced with her career in Canada. In the past couple of years, in this period of uncertainty with the pandemic, we've all been facing immense uncertainty. We've had to be nimble and adaptable, and I'm reminded of my lessons from my early years as an entrepreneur, from debate, and from my parents, that this is exactly where growth happens. It is more important for all of us now than ever before to embrace that uncertainty. Because life is no longer about following a set path. It is about chasing dreams, saying yes to opportunities, and most importantly, embracing that uncertainty. I grew up thinking that my parents had this expectation of me to be a certain someone. But really, they had been defying expectations this whole time. They had been teaching me to defy expectations. Teaching me that perfect doesn't exist. You define your perfect and defy every expectation that you need to get there. Thank you.